Today's message is from Reverend Lori Mack, and it was recorded on August 27th, 2017, and it's titled, The Art of Allowing, Affirming, My Life is Supposed to be Fun. And today we welcomed back the spirit, talent, and voice of Michael Paul Smith, who, if you come to our website, in these show notes, you can find his link to a Facebook page. Come visit us at our shiny new website, and we now, as of August 27th, have posted the fall schedule of classes. And... You can find out more about that there at SeasideCenter.org. And you can also join us in California sometime on a Sunday where we always have great music, a spirited message, and a joyful, loving, vibrant community that always awaits you. Good morning, Seaside. Hi, (laughs) y'all. Hi, Michael. I literally flew in from the airport, drove here. I was trying to be here before 11 o'clock service. Didn't work, but you all have been introduced to my dear friend, Danielle Tucker. Danielle, come on up here. She's amazing, right? She's going to be, as I'm wrapping up this amazing tour, she's going to be covering a couple more days, so I just wanted to um, formally you know, introduce her, so I'm going to let her take over for now, but thank you all so much. Danielle, Danielle Tucker, everybody. Thank you, Rebecca. Well, it really is a privilege to be with you here all today, and with that, I would love to introduce our wonderful guest artist today. You know and love him. He's just back from a tour in the uh, northern U.S. He's just released a new CD entitled Love and All That Jazz, and he has those CDs here with him today. Would you please welcome Michael Paul Smith? Seaside! Woo! Yeah! Good to be back. What happened to the sunshine? He said this is a sunshine state in Florida and California. Anyway, we're going to bring it back together collectively with this next song. I know you'll enjoy it. And I have a beautiful friend here. Thank you, friend, for you know who you are. (laughs) I have a lot of beautiful friends here. Lori's going to knock you back, put your seatbelts on, and if you need a helmet, you might need to put that on, too, when she's done. So here we go, guys. Let's try this. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshine day Oh, it's gonna be a bright, such a bright Bright as sunshiny day I think I can make it now The pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is that rainbow I've been praying for Oh, it's going to be a bright, such a bright, bright sunshine day. Oh, it's going to be a bright, such a bright, bright sunshine day. Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky. Straight ahead, there's nothing but blue sky. There's the blue skies, blue skies. There's the bluest of blue skies. Oh yeah, man, mm. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone 
I can see all obstacles in my way. I see you obstacles. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. Oh, it's gonna be a bright, such a bright, bright sunshine day. Oh, it's gonna be a bright, such a bright, bright sunshine day. Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky. Straight ahead, there's nothing but blue skies. Death the blue, blue skies. The bluest, oh, the bluest skies. Death the bluest, the bluest skies. Oh, I remind, I can see clearly now the rain. I can see all the obstacles in my way Here is that rainbow I've been praying for Well, it's gonna be a bright, such a bright, bright sunshine day It's a shiny day Oh, it's gonna be a bright, 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 bright Bright Such a bright, such a bright Oh, such a bright, shiny day Oh yeah, man A bright, bright day Yeah, yeah. Woo. yeah Woo. man uh-huh. Michael Paul uh. Smith, yes Loving all that jazz. (laughs) I can't wait. So if you want more of Michael Paul Smith, this Wednesday is the fifth Wednesday of the month. And at my Wednesday night service on the fifth Wednesday of the month, we have an artist that does the whole hour. So he will be singing, and he's an accomplished artist on the piano. He'll be telling a story, and I'm sure he'll be singing from Loving All That Jazz. Is that something like the Fosse piece? No? (laughs) <laughs> so, anyways, I'm very excited to be with you this morning. I'm excited to talk about the art of allowing. Abraham Hicks is truly one of the great teachers of our time, speaking about um, the universal laws. And what Abraham Hicks talks to us about is about practical spirituality, practical spirituality and the universal laws, because the universal laws are all, they're all absolute, they're eternal, they're always in action, whether you believe them or not. And Dr. Ernest Holmes says that they are respect, excuse me, respecters of no person. And so the art of allowing, now just the word art, to become an artist, as far as Malcolm Gladwell would say in the book of Outliners, it takes 10,000 hours to become a skilled artist. Do you agree with that, Michael? Anyone else? Yeah, 10,000 hours. So in the art of allowing, we need... <laughs> some time in order to master that part of us. But that's okay. In this book, um, The Law of Attraction, there are three universal laws that Abraham talks about before you can even move into the art of allowing. The first one is the law of attraction. The second one is the science of deliberate creation. And then we move in to the art of allowing. And it takes a little bit of time to master that, but we all can do it because when we do master the art of allowing, we live a life of joy. And we're always um, able to monitor our vibration at all times. Um, so what in the art of, in the law of attraction, what we think about comes about our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions determines what is happening in our life. And we have learned that we cannot talk about illness and have good health. And we can't continue to talk about poverty and to be prosperous. And it's impossible to continue to talk about ill relationships or loneliness and have these divine relationships. So it is where our focus goes because the energy flows where the focus is brought into our life. And what Abraham Hicks reminds us is that we have a partner in life. And that partner is the broader aspect of who we are. It's bigger and it's broader 
broader and it's on the unseen side of life. And this broader aspect of who we are is always guiding us and directing us on a daily uh, basis in order for us to meet our joy, to meet our freedom, to meet our good. And our broader part of ourself communicates with us through feelings, right? So when we are feeling negative thought, we know that we are creating negatively. And when we are feeling positive thought, we are creating positively. And she uh, definitely says there's no way that you can continue to have like a snowball of negativity and come out with a happy ending. And so it is how we feel and just asking ourselves, I want to feel good. I want to feel good. And when we make that intention to feel good, then we listen to that higher version of ourselves that's guiding us and directing us on a daily basis. Say with me, I want to feel good. I want to feel good. Two more times. I want to feel good. I want to feel good. And we set that intention out into the world. We start to communicate with the broader aspect of who we are. So as you say over and over again, I want to feel good, your inner being will whisper in your ear, go here, go there, look at this book, oh, throw that mail away, watch this television program, don't watch that one, listen to this song, oh, don't listen to that song, your inner being will guide you step by step segment by segment, moment by moment, if you will tap into the universe with this important key very important key. The only thing that matters is that I feel good. The only thing that matters is that I feel good. Say this with me. The only thing that matters is that I feel good. When we can master that important key, we can master our vibration. We master the law of attraction. We master the law of deliberate creation. And we master the art of allowing. What happens, what happens to us sometimes is that we really don't know what we want. And when we don't want, know what we want, we are opening ourselves to uh, create by default. We're opening ourselves to listen to the newspapers, to read the newspapers and listen to what they say what we want, or to watch the television and to listen to what they say what we want, or we listen to the people in our external world telling us what we want when we are not in intention with what it is that we want to create in our life. So what is it? that you do when you don't know what you want. Abraham Hicks has so many processes and tools to keep us in a higher vibration. And they say one process to recognize what you want is to ask, what do I want? What do I want? And so when you continue to ask yourself what you want, then you go into what they call a workshop. Every day, pretend like your pockets are filled with money and go down to the world and pick exactly what you would like to have in your life. Oh, I would love to have that experience traveling the world. Or I would love to have that car. How about that wonderful job? Oh, I would love to have that relationship like they have. And since once you have a bank account of things that you want to create in the world and you are clear on what you want, Abraham Hicks recommends that you get a little happy, just pet the dog or play with the children or something that makes you feel good, listen to your music, and go into a workshop. And during that time in the workshop, you're visualizing exactly what you want. You're seeing yourself in those situations. And what you are doing is you are prepaving your life. This is called prepaving. So in the future, the things that you are seeing actually come about into your life. And what Abraham quotes is, you are more productive by doing 15 minutes of visualization than 16 hours of labor a day. Wow, right? Hmm. Yeah. So the next one is the science of deliberate creation. The science of deliberate creation is now we know through the law of attraction how we are getting what we are getting. We know that everyone invites everything into their lives, whether they're doing it by default or whether they are doing it consciously. So the science of deliberate creation teaches us how to manifest things in our life deliberately. The first thing we want to do when we want to manifest something in our life is to do exactly what we did in the workshop. We want to know what we want. So when we focus on what we want, that focus becomes very, very clear, and it has a lot of power in it. And the second thing we want to accomplish is we want to give positive emotion to what we want. 
Now, when we give no emotion to what we're thinking, we are des- we're definitely creating through the physical world and by ourselves. When we give power and emotion to something that we want, then we are creating with our inner being, our broader self. Have you noticed someone who has a lot of passion for something in the world, they go out and unforeseen doors and opportunities open up because you have this whole creative life force energy that is flowing into your life. And this is when we create with our, our, our higher self, our inner being. And the third one is to expect to manifest. This is really the key to deliberate creation. Know like you know like you know that it's already done in the mind of God. And when you have that confidence, you have that deep knowing, no matter what it is that you want, it always unfolds and is always right in front of you. Now, there's two reasons why we may not manifest, and there could be more, but two of them I would like to point out. When you want something really, really bad and it's not coming into your life, one reason why it may not be coming into your life is because you may not think you deserve it. And I think I know about this because I've had this experience in my own life. And if that is the case, we have many practitioners here that will help you reveal that in your life. And once you recognize that you deserve it, it's almost like the Red Sea opens and all this beauty and unforeseen grace just starts to flow through. Right before I was about to go into my professional career as a dancer, I was really concerned because in my college life, I wasn't being booked for any of the dance roles. And when my mother pointed out that I didn't think I deserved it, I really had a long talk with myself. I thought, oh my God, I work so hard. I deserve this more than anything. And after I really came to that realization, it's almost like the Red Sea opened for me. And I worked 20 years contract to contract, but it was that one little key that I was missing. There's another little key that might be missing if we're not manifesting what we want in our life. Abraham Hicks calls this the manifestation stick, where one side of the stick is what you want. And the other side of the stick is the lack of what you want. So let's say you want to manifest a job. And you're feeling like, wow, I can't pay my bills right now. And I just got a three-day notice from my landlord. And I can't feed my children. And every time you think about that job, you pick up that stick and you're thinking about the lack of what you want. And so the whole key is to ask yourself, what is it that I want and why do I want this? And when you figure out why you want it, I want this job because I want to be a beneficial presence in the world. I want this job because I want to pay my rent. I want to feed my children. I want to live in this world of abundance. And so now you've shifted your energy and you feel like you deserve it. You feel like you can expect it. You know it's going to happen. Hmm. Another way, which I love about Abraham Hicks, they have so many tools and and opportunities to really lift your vibration and what it is that you want to create in your world. And one of them is called the focus wheel. Now, I've done this on my Wednesday night service, and I've had more people use this and really have success with it. There is an app on your phone called the focus wheel, and you can download this app. And it's almost like a wheel that spins in a circle. In the middle of the app, you put exactly what you want. Like, I have a sister that doesn't have a job, And she wanted a new car. And no one was going to be willing to give her the money for the new car. I knew she could manifest that car. I said, why don't you download that that focus wheel? So she downloaded the focus wheel. In the middle of the app, she wrote, I love my new car. And then every spoke on that focus wheel, what you do is you put in uh, why you like the new car. You probably can't see it from here, but there's a wheel that turns in a circle. And I'll show you here up on top. This is the focus wheel. I love my new car. This is her wheel. She put every reason why she loved it. It feels safe. I love the color. I love the air conditioning. I love it's daddy approved because my dad works for the car company. It's pretty cool. I love the good stereo. It's good on gas. It has a nice interior. Over and over and over, you just say this, and what happens, it lifts your vibration. So yesterday, she called me up. She said, guess what? I got my new car. I was like, what? She goes, yeah. (laughs) I said, did you use that focus wheel? She said, I did. I said, whoa, okay. That is really moving you into the vibration of what it is that you're seeking to accomplish in your life. So I have a girlfriend who is my lady landlord girlfriend. We're both landlords. And she also is my spin teacher. And she's also a Catholic. So all this stuff I talk about is a little iffy for her. Sometimes she goes onto uh, YouTube and she'll listen to me. Yesterday she texted me. Man, I am truly amazed, she said. I was listening to your talk the other day about being available to receive three gifts a day. So yesterday I did that. And I got a couple gifts. I can't remember at this moment what they were. I woke up this morning and I said, I was available for three gifts today. 
And I got my first gift for my spin student. She gave me a bunch of fabric and grocery bags, and she had made them for me. I just feel so lucky I got these gifts. Thanks for the coaching. And she said, I feel lucky. I was like, mm. <laughs> I said, well, uh, thank you for sending this text. I'm going to consider this my first gift of the day. In our teaching, we don't really believe in luck. We believe in the law. The first and most powerful law is the law of attraction. Jesus called this, because I knew she could relate, it is done unto you as you believe. It is so amazing how the universe is always wanting to please us. Keep asking, keep accepting, keep expecting. And I spelt it wrong. I go, oops, expecting. Oh my God, I got my degree with my feet. And she says, oh, now I get it, expecting. See, that was good I messed that up because then she had to think about it again. So when we are in the law of deliberate creation, the science of deliberate creation, we have to expect that it is already done in the mind of God. And this is what Abraham says about that. When you think you are a victim, living life by chance, you think there is fate or luck. And there is none of that. There is only the application of a law, either intentionally or by default. So when you think you are having fate and you think you are having luck, you are really manifesting by default. And really one important thing that she says, that there are no victims. Wow. This is Very important for us to look at. We realize in order to get out of the victim mentality that we have to take responsibility for our action and realize that everything is done by me. When we realize that we are powerful creators and we invite everything into our life, whatever has happened to us and we are a victim of that, we may have created that by default. So she continues to say that the robber and the one that's being robbed are co-creators. The robber is focused on what they want And the one who is being robbed is focused on what they don't want. The one who is um, the rapist and the one who has been raped are co-creators. The one is focused on what they want, and the other one is focused on what they don't want. The discriminator and the one that's being discriminated against are co-creators. One is focused on what they want, and one is focused on what they don't want. So we come together as one, and we are all co-creators. And if we are brave enough right, to take responsibility for what is happening to us, then we realize that we are a co-creator. I know that it's really difficult when we are living by default because you listen to the, the radio or you watch the TV and they'll tell you one out of five people get this disease or they get that disease and, they, and it affects you and you might think to yourself, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be one of those five people. But what I do when, when someone's talking like that, I always say, this is not going to be my experience. I see this, but this will not be my experience. Matter of fact, Ed Reeves came into the room to hook up the mic, and he said, oh, you're going to Spain, because I'm going to Spain in September to do the Camino. He said, did you hear what happened in Spain? Oh, the terrorist attack. you afraid to go? No, that's not going to be my experience. I'm not going to call create. I'm not going to allow it to come in to my experience. I'm only going to ask for harmony and beauty. And I'm going to prepave that by thinking only of safety and only of good when I go on my trip. So now we're ready to go into the art of allowing. We know how we get what we get and why it comes to us. We know that we are co-creators. We can create by default or we can create consciously. We know how to do the science of deliberate creation, that we can actually create by knowing what we want, given that emotion, and really knowing that it's going to happen to us. And we move into the art of allowing. The art of allowing, tricky business, very tricky business. This is it. This is one part of it. There's two parts of it. I am that I am. I am that ever-growing, evolving being. I invite everything into my experience. And you invite everything into your experience. If you are creating negatively in your life, I'm going to allow you to have your experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into the ditch. I'm not going to roll down the hill with the roll of negativity. I'm going to allow you to have your experience. But I am not cold-hearted. If you would like, I will uplift you. I will know the truth of your being. I will see you how you want to be seen. Perfect, whole, complete. Abundance, love, and joy. But I am not going to get into the ditch. This can be difficult for us. Because there's people out there that want to control other people. 
I want you to do what I want you to do. I want you to say. I want you to become. You can't control anyone. What we have to do is just allow everyone to have their experience, and you have your experience. And our job is to keep our focus on our vibration, to keep our focus on our joy, because our life is meant to be fun. We are here to express joy in our experience. So by paying attention to the way you feel, then choosing thoughts that feel the very best, you are managing your own vibration, which means you are controlling your own point of attraction, which means you are creating your own reality. It's such a wonderful thing to realize that you can create your own reality without sticking your nose in everybody's business. And that the less attention you give to everybody else's reality, the purer your vibration is going to be. And the more you are going to be pleased with what comes to you. Yes. You can call this the art of minding your own business. (laughs) Or the art of minding your own vibration is really what it is. So last week I was hiking in the Sierras with my girlfriend and she was training me for the Camino. And when you hike, what happens, things just kind of come up. That's why I'm going on the Camino, to clear whatever I wanted to clear, have a new life. And she started talking about, you know, the people in the world that are destroying the world, the politicians, how terrible it is, and how her world is terrible, and how our earth is tumbling down, and everything is just coming to an end. And she's going on and on and on. And you want to know what? I'm just letting her have her own experience. I'm practicing the art of allowing, and I'm just listening to her, because sometimes we just need somebody to listen to us, and that is part of the healing. So the next day, we're walking again, and here she goes. She starts talking about how the world is terrible, and it's coming to an end, and all these politicians are ruining us, and they're destroying us. And I can't hear her because I'm just not there. There's no button to be pushed within me. Now, I'm not tolerating her. There's a difference between tolerating her and allowing her. I'm completely allowing her. When we're tolerating her, you're like, oh, my God, what is she saying? You know, and then just letting her have her experience. Finally, at the end of the day, she said, Lori, do you think you can help me wrap my head around this? I was like, oh, I thought you'd never ask. So, <laughs> so then I started to talk about how we can can allow, how we can lift up the world. If there's a problem, if there's, if we can find a way to inspire ourselves to be a beneficial presence to the world by making great changes, then we are practicing the art of allowing. And she said, but I have a friend also, and my friend is homeless, and she lives in her car, and I don't have the money to help her, and I have a roommate, so I can't help her. What do I do? And I said, well, You lift her up. You don't have to, you can allow her to have her experience. You don't have to get into the ditch with her. You can know that there's plenty of money and plenty of jobs and plenty of opportunities for her. And you know what? We can sit together right here and right now and know that for her. And so we had a spiritual mind treatment. Because when you have a spiritual mind treatment and you release it into the law of mind, you are allowing the good to flow into your life. And that's why I'm inviting you at the end to stand with the practitioners and to allow the truth because it's the truth that sets us free. So the second part of the art of allowing goes like this. I am that I am. I am an ever-evolving uh, character, (laughs) ever-evolving person, expanding and growing at my own rate. And I invite everything into my experience. And I know that you are, that you are, you're an ever-growing, expanding person, inviting things and people and situations into your experience. Now, when you look at me and I don't please you, when you decide that I'm pushing your button and you don't like me, I'm going to allow you to have your experience. And I'm going to be over here I'm going to be minding my own vibration, and I'm going to be thinking about joy. Woo! That's a toughie. That's a toughie, right? Especially when we're little and we're, we're, we're trying to get approval from our authorities that they look at us a certain way. Ah, that's what I've done all my life, you know? <laughs> and so can we allow someone not to like us, not to approve of us, and we stay in our power? We know who we are. We are that divine expression of love and light. And I'm focusing on my joy because life is meant to have fun. This is a very difficult thing to do. But everyone is on their own journey. And that's why it takes 10,000 hours to be the artist of allowing. The only thing that matters to me is that I feel good. Say that with me. The only thing that matters to me is that I feel good. One more time. The only thing that matters to me is that I feel good. 
Yeah, so <laughs> I was a Baptist at one time. You ever heard that word backsliding? So, <laughs> okay, I backslid. So I wanted to, um, I don't know if you know this, but I am leaving Seaside Center for Spiritual Living, and I am moving into a focus ministry, which I'm very excited for. It's been calling me for a long time, and I'm in a focus ministry group. And two weeks ago, I had my ordination panels, and they decide whether you are worthy to be a minister for the rest of your life or not. And so what happened to me is I started creative, creating negatively because I was afraid my panel wasn't going to love me. I was afraid they were going to be mad at me because I was going into my own focus ministry. But this is not outside the box. There are many focus ministers. As a matter of fact, when I walk into the panel, the girl next to me in the other room was a focus minister. And they were uplifting her and praising her. And she had this jubilant celebration. And then I walked into my panel and the first thing they said to me, so what does your future look like? I was like, oh, do we have to ask that question? I said, well, I'm going into this focus ministry, and I got really excited about my focus ministry. And they're like, well, according to this paper, there's no questions on here that pertain to you. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what did I create? Oh, my God. They didn't want to pass me. Everything that I created, there is no victims. And of course, I passed because they had to pass me. I knew I was going to pass, but I gave myself that experience of my panel not liking me. They pretty much said to them, you can't judge her from here, what's going to happen in the future. You have to judge her from the past to what has happened right now. I know what I'm doing, that I am following my inner being, I'm following that light, that I'm going to be a beneficial presence in the world and do good things in the world. There is not a doubt in my mind, but because I created that... Look what happened to me. We invite everything in into our experience. There are no victims. And it got worse. Because of my codependency, I'm like, I was mad at them. I wasn't standing in my power. I was mad for two days at them. And I finally thought, okay, we got to heal this. And we got to heal it now. Abraham Hicks, boy, they got, they have the processes. They have a process called the rampage of appreciation. And that's exactly... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this lesson because it gave me more hours in my 10,000 hours. <laughs> thank you for Seaside. Thank you for the ministry. Just thank you for everything. And just really kind of healed it and eased it up. And I know that I don't have to bring that vibration into my experience again when we are in this full gratitude. So the great thing is... The deliberate creation is about feeling good anyway. It's not letting the behavior, the attitude, or the opinions, or the belief of someone else to be so dominant in your experience that affects the way you feel. That's why true mastery of the law of attraction really is. Wow. Right? So we're all, we're all we, we never get it done, Abraham tells us. We never get it done. We are all a process of evolution, and we just have to be easy on ourselves throughout this journey. So today, I'm going to invite you on November 12th. I am going to have um, an ordination, and it's called Eat, Dance, Pray. <laughs> and I'm so excited because life is supposed to be fun. It's going to be beautiful. I have my rock cat girlfriend coming out, and she's going to be singing. I have a Sufi band that's going to start. I don't know. We have any Seaside Sisters here? I'm going to invite some of the sisters to come and do the One Billion Rising if you want to. I'm also going to have a, uh, a DJ and um, a Sufi teacher will teach us a couple dances. So this is going to be exciting. I hope you enjoy us for that because why life is supposed to be fun. Say that with me. Life is supposed to be fun. So as we become allowers and we practice the art of allower, we, we recognize that we are here on planet Earth. We are in the school called life. And we're supposed to have fun and enjoy it. And when we move from the law of attraction, understanding how we get what we get and why, recognizing that we can manifest consciously. When we go into the uh, science of deliberate creation, we recognize that we are the creator of our life and we can, we can be, do, and have whatever it is that we want. And we move into the art of allowing. We know that we have the opportunity to have this freedom of joy in our life as long as we, and together we say, the only thing that matters is that I feel good. And so it is. Thank you. I'm going to miss you. Thank you very much. All right. Rebecca or Danielle, thank you so much. <laughs> no 
complaints and no regrets. I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets. For I have learned that all you give, it's all you get. So you give it all you got. I've had my share, I drank my fill, and even though I am satisfied, I'm hungry still to see what's down another road, beyond a hill, and to do it all again. dreamer and their dream Funny how the time just flies How love can go from warm hellos to sad goodbyes and leave you with a memory you memorize to keep your winter warm For there's no yes in yesterday And who knows what tomorrow brings Or takes away As long as I'm still in the game I'm gonna play for love, for life, for life. So here's to life and every joy that it brings. So here to life to that dreamer and their dreams and may all your storms be weathered and all that's good just get better La 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 And all that's good just get better. Here's to life, here's to love, and here's to you. La 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 Yes, Michael Paul Smith, beautiful. Yes. Mm-hmm.